From the CISO series, it's Cybersecurity Headlines. These are the Cybersecurity Headlines for Friday, December 1st, 2023. I'm Steve Prentice. Manufacturing industry tops cyber extortion trend. According to the annual threat landscape report from France-based Orange Cyber Defense, the manufacturing sector has ranked as the top targeted industry representing 20% of all cyber extortion campaigns, which is more than 17% higher than the second-placed industry, which is professional, scientific and technical services. The report also showed that large English-speaking economies had the highest numbers of victims, with 53% headquartered in the U.S., followed distantly by the U.K. with 6% and Canada with 5%. However, they are seeing the crime wave spreading with India, Oceania and Africa showing significant growth. Google's RetVec is the latest warrior on bad emails. There is a new multilingual tool in town available for battling spam and malicious emails in Gmail, and its name is RetVec. This is short for Resilient and Efficient Text Vectorizer, and this solution is from Google, intended to deal with the next level of text manipulation in spam mail, such as homoglyphs, for example, where the digit 1 is used in the place of a lowercase l, also leet, L-E-E-T, which uses creative substitutions such as spelling the word leet as 1337, even detecting invisible characters. In addition, the vectorization half of the product maps words or phrases from a vocabulary to a corresponding numerical representation in order to perform further analysis. According to Google, this product works out of the box in 100 languages and has improved spam detection rates by 38%. Zycel warns of multiple critical vulnerabilities in NAS devices. The maker of network-attached storage devices, mostly for small and medium-sized businesses, is warning of flaws impacting NAS-326 devices that could allow unauthorized access for threat actors, allowing them to execute operating system commands, obtain sensitive system information, or take complete control of the affected NAS devices. There are six CVE flaws listed, and these can be found in the company's security bulletin linked in the show notes to this episode. Staples confirms a cyber incident. The office supply retailer took down some of its systems earlier this week to mitigate what it calls a cybersecurity risk. This is to address internal operation problems, including, quote, an inability to access Zendesk, VPN employee portals, print email, use phone lines, and more, end quote. As of this recording, a message remains on the Staples.com website stating that systems are, quote, in the process of being restored and that Staples stores are open and operating normally. And now a word from our sponsor, SpyCloud. New research from SpyCloud reveals a critical discovery. Nearly a third of ransomware victim companies this year were infected with info-stealer malware like Raccoon, Vidar, or Redline before they were attacked. These info-stealers exfiltrate authentication data from infected systems to aid follow-on attacks. Everything from passwords to 2FA codes and even cookies that enable session hijacking without the need for credentials at all. SpyCloud specializes in recapturing and remediating data siphoned from info stealers to protect businesses and their users from cybercrime. Get SpyCloud's new research and check your malware exposure at spycloud.com slash CISO. That is S-P-Y-C-L-O-U-D dot com slash CISO. Rysida claims King Edward VII hospital breach. Following up on a story we brought you on Monday, the Ricida ransomware group has now laid claim to the hack of King Edward VII's private hospital in London and has added it to their Tor leak site. The hospital is a private, acute and specialist facility known to cater to the British royal family, amongst others. The group has published images of some of the stolen documents, which include medical reports, registration forms, x-rays and prescriptions. The group claims that data from the royal family is included in the trove, which they are looking to sell as a unit for 10 Bitcoin. In our Monday report, the hospital stated that the royal's data was not involved in the theft, as it is kept in a separate location. Dollar Tree hit by third-party data breach. 
The discount store chain Dollar Tree is dealing with a data breach as a result of a hack of analytics service provider Zeroed In Technologies that occurred on August 7th and 8th of this year. The breach has led to the theft of basic PII of almost 2 million people, including employees of Dollar Tree and Family Dollar stores. According to Bleeping Computer, other zeroed-in customers, apart from Dollar Tree and Family Dollar, may also have been impacted. Fjord Phantom Android malware uses virtualization to evade detection. Discovered by Norwegian tech security company Promon, P-R-O-M-O-N, this is a new Android malware that uses virtualization to run malicious code in a container to evade detection. Promon's report states that it moves via email, SMS and messaging apps and are targeting banking apps in Indonesia, Thailand, Vietnam, Singapore and Malaysia. They state, quote, victims are tricked into downloading what appears to be legitimate banking apps, but which contain malicious code running in a virtual environment to attack the real banking app, end quote. Ex-Motorola employee confesses to phishing scam. A cautionary tale from Graham Cluley at Tripwire about a New Hampshire man who has pleaded guilty to charges after having successfully tricked staff of his past employer, Motorola, to provide him with their login credentials to help him with a supposed, quote, task awaiting approval, end quote. His phishing emails to his ex-colleagues got them to click on a link to a site that asked them to provide their login information. He also sent an SMS message to a Motorola employee asking for and receiving their MFA code. After his arrest, he attempted to order a false passport, even writing to New Hampshire Senator Maggie Hassan, asking that his application be expedited. And that stunt might add 10 years to the potential 20 years for this Motorola hack. We're kicking off December in style by hosting another Super Cyber Friday conversation later today. We will be spending the hour discussing hacking trust management, digging into the major concerns companies have working with new vendors and proactive steps that can establish trust and how trust building differs across industries. Check out the preview video of the conversation over at CISOseries.com and then register to join us for the full talk today at 1 p.m. Eastern, 10 a.m. Pacific. This is followed by a truly excellent networking meetup. Then come back to join us at 3.30 p.m. Eastern, 12.30 Pacific for the Cybersecurity Headlines Week in Review Show, where we will be running down the top cybersecurity stories of this week with expert insights from our CISO guest, Christina Shannon, CIO of Kick Consumer Products. Just head on over to CISOseries.com and click once again on Events to register to join us live and join in on the conversation. We love when people add their comments to the show. I'm Steve Prentice, reporting for the CISO series. Cybersecurity headlines are available every weekday. Head to CISOseries.com for the full stories behind the headlines.